Hello, my name is Russell Singer with the Avaya Serviceability Engineering Team. This video will demonstrate how to configure and troubleshoot the LDAP directory settings on the Avaya desktop video device. We're going to begin by accessing the settings menu from the applications fan on the left. And then we'll scroll down in that menu all the way down to the bottom where we'll find the directory login option. Under this menu, there's really only one option, and that's the one we want. It's the LDAP directory options. And here we have all of the LDAP related settings for the ADVD. Now on this settings screen, there are only a couple of different settings that really we need to worry about when configuring LDAP. Most of these are correct by default, and so you don't need to change them. Uh, but the three settings we'll be changing are the LDAP directory server address, the search route, and then down at the bottom of the list we'll also be changing the LDAP directory credentials, which is essentially our login for the LDAP server. But let's start by verifying that the LDAP directory server address is correct. So this I address needs to be the IP address of your domain controller if you're using Active Directory or your LDAP server. This is a, an IP address that should be provided to you by your IT administrator. And in fact, it's the same IP address that you can connect to in order to test LDAP as well, which we'll look at in a couple of minutes here. But for now, we'll go ahead and save that server IP address. And now we'll move on to the second setting, which is the LDAP server credentials. That's down at the bottom of the list here. Now, if you're using an Active Directory LDAP server, then your directory credentials will be the same credentials you use to log in with, to your Windows PC with. Essentially, that includes the domain, as you see it on the screen here, with a backslash and then your username. And then you would also specify your Windows login password. Now, if you're not using Active Directory, if you're using a Linux-based LDAP server, for example, or if your Active Directory server is configured to allow anonymous binding, then it is possible to anony anonymously bind to the LDAP server, which essentially just means you would not enter any credentials here. So both the username and the password fields would be completely blank. But in our case, because we are using Active Directory, I've specified the domain, which is IPS Pune BB backslash, and then my username, which is the administrator account. And then I'll also go ahead and specify the password for that account and click the Save button. And now that we've configured both the LDAP server IP address as well as the LDAP credentials, we're ready to configure the LDAP server base search string. And for that, we need to scroll back up to the top of the LDAP directory options menu here. And we'll select the option that says search root. The search route is essentially the most important and yet confusing part of administering LDAP on the ADVD. This search route needs to be the base directory or the base tree in your LDAP server that the ADVD will begin to search for users in. So essentially on an LDAP server, especially an active directory LDAP server, you typically have a container or an organizational unit which contains all of your users and essentially you would specify that container or that organizational unit as the search route here on your ADVD. So for example as you look at the search route I have specified here the domain is the ipspunebb.com and the container which has all of my users in it is the users container that's specified there as part of the string. Now this is typically something your IT department should manage and they should have this information available to provide to you when you're administering the LDAP on the ADVD. But we'll look at a way to troubleshoot this from a Windows PC assuming that the search string they give you is incorrect or not working the way you expect it to. One thing to keep in mind about this string on the ADVD is that it does require a container or an organizational unit for your users. 
Uh, so essentially what that means is you cannot specify just the domain without specifying a container in this search route here on the ADVD. Now that's different from some of the other Avaya endpoints, for example, 1x Communicator, where you can specify just the domain. Uh, and the 1x Communicator would allow you to search all of the containers that are part of that domain. However, that's not the case for the ADVD. You do need to specify a single container as your starting container for the LDAP search route. And I'll explain more about that to you as we go through the steps to verify your configuration through your Windows PC. But for now, we'll go ahead and click the Save button, and then we'll test our settings, assuming they're correct, by clicking the Directory Search option on the right side there. And we'll just type in Admin to see who we can find. And as you can see, we did get several contacts listed there. So we've been able to verify that LDAP is indeed working on our ADVD. Now let's take a look at how we can troubleshoot this configuration on our Windows PC, assuming something wasn't working the way we expect it to. The tool that we'll be using to troubleshoot our LDAP configuration is called LDP. And that's a Microsoft tool. There are other options available to you, but this is actually free for Windows users. If you're running Windows XP, this tool comes packaged as part of the Service Pack 2 support tools, which is what you see on the, on the screen here. And that's free for download for Windows XP users. If you're running Windows 7, it's actually part of the Windows 7 Server Administration Tools package. Now, what I'm going to be demonstrating to you is how to run this on Windows 7, but in either case, the configuration of the, and use of the tool itself is the same once you have it installed. Now, we'll start by loading the LDP application. And for that, in Windows 7 at least, we can just go to the search field at the bottom of the Start menu and type in ldp.exe. This will find the program automatically and then we'll click the program from the search list there at the top. And that loads the LDP application for us. Now what we'll be doing is going through really a, a three-step process in order to verify our LDAP configuration. The first thing we'll do is connect to the LDAP server. Then we will bind to the LDAP server, which is essentially authenticating with the LDAP server. And then lastly, we'll be viewing the LDAP tree, which will give us an idea of what we need to set our search route to on the ADVD. To connect with our Active Directory server, we're going to go up to the Connection Menu item at the top of the window there, and we'll choose the Connect Menu option. From there, this will open a small dialog box where really all we need to do is enter the IP address of our Active Directory server, the same IP address we entered in the ADVD when we configured it. And then we'll go ahead and click the OK button to connect to that Active Directory server. Now we can tell from all the information on the right that it did indeed connect. And now we're going to bind by going up to the connection menu and choosing the bind option from that menu. Again, this is essentially authenticating with the Active Directory server. Now that pops up a small dialog box again where we enter our authentication information. And the best way to test this is to use the same authentication that is the username and password that you use on the ADVD itself. As you can see, we specify the user as administrator and the password is the same password I specified on the ADVD when I configured LDAP. Additionally, you'll notice that I do have the domain specified there. It's not necessary to specify the .com portion of that domain. Uh, one way or the other, it will work, uh, at least through this tool here. Though on the ADVD, you should not have the .com portion of the domain specified. You just would want to enter IPSPUNEBB. So we'll go ahead and enter that information and then click OK to see if we're able to successfully authenticate with this uh, LDAP server or Active Directory server. Now, as you notice at the bottom of that window on the right, it does say that we successfully authenticated as the administrator. So now let's go ahead and look at the Active Directory tree and find out what our base search route should be on the ADVD. For that, we'll go up to the View menu at the top of the window, and we'll select the Tree option from that menu. 
This pops up a small dialog box with only a single field that says base DN. This is where we'll specify the base domain of our LDAP directory. This is essentially the active directory domain, which in our case is the ipspunebb.com. And we do need to make sure that when we enter that string as the base DN, we enter it using the LDAP format rather than the dot separator format. Now, depending on the size of your LDAP or Active Directory, it may take several seconds for the LDAP tree to load. And you'll notice that on the left side of the window in the left pane, we did get our LDAP tree loaded. We see the DC equals IPS Pune BB uh, DC equals com. So what we'll do is go ahead and expand that tree or that domain to look at the Active Directory tree. You'll notice that under our Active Directory domain, we have all of our subtrees or Active Directory containers. And if you remember from our ADVD configuration, we specified the users container, which is down at the bottom of the list, as our search root. So essentially, that is the container that the ADVD will search for users in. Let's go ahead and expand that container on this server to see if there are actually any users in that container. Now after waiting just a moment for that to load, we do see a list of our users that are part of the users container, which are in this active directory. So basically when we search on our ADVD, it will find any of those users that are part of this container. Now a couple of caveats that we mentioned earlier, I just want to cover with you once again, since we're looking at this hierarchy here on the active directory server. First of all, because we specify the user's container as our search root, the ADVD is not able to search for users that would be under different containers at the same level as the user's container. So what that means is, for example, if you look at our list of containers here in this, in this LDP window, we also have another container further up in the list called 1x CES users. And there are users under that container. However, the ADVD will not be able to search for those users because we specified the users container as our search root. Another thing to keep in mind here is that as of ADVD release 1.1, there is still a limitation where you cannot specify the base domain, which essentially would just be the DC equals IPS Pune BB comma DC equals com as your search root. That does not work, and in fact, if you do that, the ADVD will not find any users in your active directory. So it is good to keep those two caveats in mind as you administer LDAP or active directory on the ADVD. But essentially, at this point, we've been able to verify that our connection settings are correct, both our IP address as well as our authentication model. And so ADV, the ADVD is configured properly, and LDAP is working on the ADVD. Thank you for your time today. We hope this information was useful. We welcome your questions, comments, and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at avaya mentor. Thank you for choosing Avaya.